I'm the CEO of Sirenu Scientific and we are pioneering new drugs for orphan and common cardiovascular diseases. I hope you'll find the presentation interesting. So our main program, our lead program is trying to solve uh, and provide value for patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension, very deadly disease, seven and a half years life expectancy in mean, uh, mainly um, hurting uh, females, but also males. So seven and a half years expectancy, and the drugs available today can't solve the problem. Uh, they're just symptomatic. Here needs to be agents that can remodel the structure in the uh, vasculars. Um, now, cardiovascular is the most common cause of death for humans on the planet, and 80% of that is uh, due to thrombotic events and causing damage to the major organs, so the brain and the heart, so stroke and, and myocardial infarction. That's the second focus of our uh, pioneering event. Now, the drugs available there, it's a major area, of course, but they are not effective enough and the reason they're not effective enough, one of the reasons is that they're quite dangerous to use. Three out of 100 die of bleedings caused by the drugs used in clinical material. 25 out of 100 get some kind of bleeding. That's a lot. So we aim to develop effective drugs that doesn't cause this bleeding risk. Now, uh, we are pioneering, we believe. We have strong leadership some of the best minds in cardiovascular research around the globe. And we are connected with both University of Michigan in the US, the largest university in the States, and their research. Uh, and also, we are doing a collaborative uh, um, work together with Abbott, one of the giant med techs in our lead program in PH. We have three programs in development, two in HDAC inhibition, epigenetic modulation with HDAC inhibition. It's a new thing in cardiovascular disease. And we have a third program, a prostacycline agonist based on an endogenic lipid uh, developed by uh, Mike Collinstead at University of Michigan, which we have licensed for global rights. So we, we believe we are uniquely positioned to do something really good here. Our lead program is in pulmonary arterial hypertension. We are in phase two, a trial pursued in the US at around 10 centers, nine centers currently. And we are aiming to complete that by uh, Q1 next year. This is the program we're doing together with Abbott and their uh, groundbreaking technology uh, implantable device to measure the pulmonary arterial pressure, cardiomems. I'll get back to that. Our second program is CSO14. It's uh, soon completing phase one and moving into the clinic next year. So we're going to file an IND uh, for uh, moving into uh, our phase one study. The third program is, as I mentioned, a prostacycline agonist. That's in preclinical pre work. Um, now, looking at pH, it's a uh, there's a great unmet need, as I mentioned, and the market is around uh, growing towards 11 billion, growing 6% healthy growth. Um, but the, the need for new drugs is so very strong, and I'll get back to why. So we have in CS1 a drug that has a multi-efficacy capacity as documented in preclinical work. So we have seen pulmonary pressure reduction, reverse remodeling on the structures of the cardiovascular and the heart. Uh, and we have antifibrotic, anti-inflammatory, and also anti-thrombotic uh, capacity with this drug, all documented in preclinical work. And this fits very well with the disease uh, pathophysiology in PH. And um, we are studying these effects in uh, our trial in phase two. The trial is safety and tolerance as primary objective, but we are studying a number of parameters, including structure, etc. cetera. Uh, the drug we're using is an old drug, uh, VPA, used for uh, prevention of epilepsy. 
Uh, so it's been in man for, for 60 years approximately. So it has very good safety and tolerability, and we didn't see any issues in our phase one study. We got an orphan drug designation by FDA, so we have seven years exclusivity once approved and marketed. It's, we have a strong patent portfolio, we believe, so three patent families, and we have documented or uh, pursued that in 21 countries worldwide. So this is the study. We're studying three different dosages in uh, these patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension. And they are being studied with Abbott's implantable device that's implanted prior to the study uh, is randomized, or the patients are randomized into these different dosages. They're, following, they're being followed 12 weeks, and um, uh, that's the end of the study. And there's a two weeks follow-up uh, after the therapy has been discontinued. The numbers here uh, on the progress of the study is uh, from August 23, and we'll come back with an update later to the market. Now, this summer, uh, we really got some remarkable uh, news about the study. An investigator in the study reported back after the patient had completed uh, clinical findings out of the study, which we, uh, when we got to know this, said we have to release this information. And so in this patient, 51-year um, uh, female, been on drugs for three years, uh, therapies, three different therapies, um, well established, and was added CS1, our drug, and we, see, we saw a 30% reduction of uh, mean pulmonary arterial pressure. We saw an increase of 20% approximately on cardiac output and a decrease of 43% on pulmonary resistance. So this is a remarkable improvement in a patient. And she moved from functional class two to functional class one. In functional class two, you have ve you're very impacted symptomatically by the disease. In functional class one, you, you basically have your diagnosis. You don't feel that much from your disease. A number of other parameters were improved. So this gives us a very strong hope that we will uh, be able to do something useful in this patient group. Uh, this patient had gone, finished the study and was on the strongest dose of the three in the study. This, these findings prompted a data quality control initiative by our company and clinical steering committee, uh, where we wanted to secure that the data transfer from CardioMEMS in on efficacy parameters were optimal uh, before we get to the end of the study in Q1 on all patients. So, uh, and, and we also wanted to uh, make sure that we had adherence to protocol. And so we did that, initiated that the 15th of uh, September, and in that review was 16 patients out of the study. And uh, this, these are the findings, so they were just uh, communicated uh, uh, about two weeks ago. So we, we to our, um, uh, t the good thing we found here, of course, was that there were no concerning issues with the uh, digital data transfer or a patient-physician protocol adherence, so that's key. But the other things that we saw uh, was g gives us more hope of a positive uh, outcome when we have the top line at the end of the study, is that several patients in reduction of area under the curve, as measured with CardioMEMS on mean pulmonary pressure, had the uh, same or better uh, reduction of pulmonary pressure than the patient case. So this indicates a clinically meaningful reduction of pulmonary arterial pressure in this study uh, on top of standard of care drug therapy. In addition, we saw that 60% of the patient reviewed in, in, in this analysis had a sustained reduction of mean pulmonary arterial pressure. We also saw that uh, the pattern of reduction of MP, uh, MPAP, mean pulmonary arterial pressure, was compatible with the dose uh, response. Uh, response. And uh, we don't know the dose, so we, the, the study is blinded for those, this analysis was blinded for those, but we, uh, we will see at the end of the study if we have a dose response curve. We also saw an early onset of uh, impact of CS1, so already after three minutes. 
And we also saw sustained efficacy after two weeks when the uh, drug had been uh, discontinued. So we are very much looking forward to the end of the study and the top line results now. So we have these three drugs in development and two of them have shown very interesting impact on um, thrombosis prevention. And as you know, thrombosis prevention is this major market is going to approach 43 billion by uh, to 2030. And we have seen efficacy on uh, both our uh, compounds CSO14 and CS585 in very translatable mouse models, cremaster models and without increasing risk of bleed. So this gives us very much hope in that area. Um, so I would just mention that uh, this portfolio that we have is now approaching interest to do business development deals or exits uh, to uh, pharma partners in the world, I think. So we are gearing up our activities uh, with the portfolio, both for pH the HDAC portfolio per se, and for thrombosis prevention. And the deal that was made recently, well, two years ago, but it's a benchmark deal in PH, Merck bought the company for 11 and a half billion US dollars when they had finished phase two and were starting phase three. So that's a very good benchmark. We believe that our product could beat Sotartacept when we uh, get to the market. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Stan. <laughs> We've quite a few questions here, mainly concerning the, the results. Um, so what do these results, what would you say they mean in terms of market potential? Well, you know, we are a bit away from the market. So for a biotech, as you know, there are two markets. One is the deal market and one is the actual pharma market, if you bring the drug to the market. Most of the time, pharmas get into a development deal or are bought out before the drug gets to the market. When it comes to orphan diseases, you could actually pursue your uh, launch and marketing yourself. And, and we are keeping that door open for now. But of course, uh, if our clinical data uh, for CS1 uh, would uh, look as the patient case, uh, in, in the spring next year, I think uh, we would be an attractive uh, partner to do a deal with. So, and um, currently it looks actually better than uh, Sotartacept, both from a, a delivery oral, uh, from side effect profile and efficacy profile. We'll see. Have you had any comments from external researchers or industry people about this patient case that you presented? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if anyone here wants to listen more to, to uh, we had a Capital Markets Day in, uh, it was held on the 30th of August, where we had Abbott, uh, the head of, uh, chief medical officer for Abbott presenting, Cardium Ems. We had our uh, principal investigator, Raymond Bensa, presenting the trial and also the patient case. So I think uh, from that perspective, but that's all, of course people involved in, in our effort. Uh, we haven't. Uh, we we have di dialogues with potential interests, and we've had that for a while. If we look ahead to a potential phase three studies, have you had any thoughts about potential primary, secondary endpoints for such a study? Uh, I think you know the, the, what people really want to see is the remodeling uh, effect that we seem to see even in the patient case here, and. Um, uh, the, currently, though, FDA is approving drugs on, on six minute walk distance, which is a, a physical ability. And I think yeah, until they change that, we'll have to have that in our uh, you know, data set when we go to market. But we will have a dialogue with FDA about our study and the data. In fact, FDA's drug and tech division had a meeting about our study and approved to put cardio MEMS in the patients and CS1 in the patients to study them both because cardio MEMS, it, this is the first study done this way ever. So you're able to follow the patient every day uh, because cardio MEMS sends signals to a computer. So we will have that dialogue with FDA and discuss the protocol when we are done. Well, thank you so much, Stan. Thank you, appreciate it.